token, baby. Woo! We're gonna be showing you my setup, some of the best base, best techniques, and best locations to catch these fish. Woo! Look at that jump. This is probably the number one thing people get wrong when kokanee fishing. How's it going guys and welcome to Southwest Angling and today we are kokanee salmon fishing. We've never had it on the channel and I am very, very excited to show you some tips on how to catch these fish. Now today we're fishing Navajo Lake, one of New Mexico's best lakes and this lake is jam packed with kokanee. There's also some trout swimming around here so these trolling techniques will work for those but today we are targeting kokanee. We're going to be showing you my setup, some of the best baits, best techniques, best locations to catch these fish and hopefully it turns out pretty well. So let's get on the water, get our lines out and get to trolling. All right, we're hooked up. First fish of the day. I can, I can, I, I felt it move for a little. I think it's still on. Crap, it's wrapped around things in the boat, I think. Oh, we still got one. Let's see what it is. That's a kokanee, baby. Woo! That right there. Oh, there's a kokanee on the wedding ring. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at how that thing shines in the sun that chrome green purple let's get the hook out of this little guy all right we're gonna release this fish i think he's swimming off okay and there he goes down to the depths awesome kokanee trolling amazing fish so beautiful those colors really shine we're gonna keep trolling hopefully get more awesome start to the day all right, so the rigs we've been catching these fish on, we're fishing with two of them, and you'll notice we aren't fishing with downriggers. Don't want to spend that kind of money. So we're using sort of the poor man solution. This is a jet diver, and it's going to bring our line way down there. I forgot exactly how deep this will bring our line, but um, it's one of the uh, very good ways to get your presentation down there when you don't have a lot of weight. And then we have about a, I'd say two foot leader to a dodger. And this is gonna do a lot of the work for us, flash, reflect that light and attract those fish in from a very long distance. We're fishing very clear water. So even if the fish are much deeper than my presentation, they're still gonna see that. And this right here, this is probably one of the most important things I can have on my rig. It's called a snubber. Now, everything about what I'm using is to give more stretch to that line. The, the reason I'm not using my bait casters for this is because they have a very fast tip and these rods bend a lot. You want more of a bend and this is a rubber elastic thing. It's going to stretch even more. These kokanee have very soft mouths and the last thing I want to do is to pull a lure out of it. So everything about stretch and lastly uh, on this presentation we have a wedding ring. Just sort of the classic kokanee lure. It's got that shiny thing in the middle. And then on this rod, instead of a jet diver, we have a dipsy diver. So this is also going to get our line very, very deep. Again, this is probably about an 18 inch leader. And then we have a flasher, a bunch of these rotating sort of spinner blades to get a lot of flash out there. Again, it's sort of an alternative to a dodger. It's going to move your lure less. And then what I've got in the back of here is actually a homemade lure. Now this has been catching as many fish as that wedding ring, but it's super cheap to make. And that's what it looks like right there. And if you guys want to see a video of how I actually make these, let me know and I'll be sure to save you some money when kokanee fishing. So that's all we're doing and it is working very, very well. All right, possible fish, possible fish. The rod was acting a little weird and I see something down there. This guy's bigger, I think it's another kokanee. Oh, it just came off, oh man. Oh well, that was my fault, didn't keep the rod tight, but the system's definitely working. All right, we're just checking our lines and there's actually a kokanee on this one. We're gonna rebate with corn. This one's bigger and it was on the lure I made myself. Look at that. Getting a net here. Look at that. I don't know if he hit on the way up, but I didn't even, I didn't even see the rod go on this one. So always important to check your rods, guys. That is a nice fish right there. Now, kokanee are a really weird fish. They're actually filter feeders. So the stuff we're doing, we're not trying to sort of whet their appetites. We're actually trying to annoy the crap out of them. So everything we're doing, these bright, shiny colors, these crazy vibrations that these flashers and dodgers make, that's all to sort of annoy them. So imagine you're walking down the street and you see some guy dressed in a really just ugly, just terrible outfit and he's just dancing like a weirdo and he also smells like crap so you're gonna want to punch him and that's exactly what these kokanee are doing they're attacking these lures 
and I will say maybe 50% of what's doing the job is this corn. Now, it's not normal corn. I've actually added some stuff. So we're gonna go back in time to pass Donnie and see how we made it. All right, so we're about to go kokanee fishing and I need to make the corn to help catch these fish. Now, salmon have an incredible sense of smell, but what we're trying to make, we're not trying to make it smell delicious. We're actually trying to make it smell absolutely just horrible for them. We're trying to agitate their nose so much because these salmon are just filter feeders. So we really just have to make it smell like just so potent and strong that they're pretty much pissed off enough to strike our bait. So. All we're going to be starting out with this is a really simple recipe. We have got corn. Now most people use white shoe peg corn, but we couldn't find any of that. And for some reason they sell mixed white and gold corn. I'm not sure the exact purpose and why you would want mixed corn, but that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we have minced garlic, very important ingredient. Uh, if you look at like power baits for trout, one of the main ingredients is garlic. Maybe they actually like the taste of that. And um, the label came off of this one, but this is actually anise. And that's also a very popular scent to add to corn, and that's why we're using it today. And then we just have a container and spoon to mix it all up with. All right, the first step, I've just cut a little slit in this corn, and we have to drain all the juice inside. We want that corn to absorb the new things we're putting in it, and we don't really care too much about that very distinct corn scent. So all we're gonna do is cut a little slit, and then pour it out the side. All right, now we just gotta add our corn to our container like that. All right, next I'm gonna add our garlic. Now all you need is just the tiniest little amount. We're just gonna put, just kidding, we're putting the whole thing in there. Nothing is too much for these fish. We want to really just agitate their nose and get them to strike. So just go all in, waste all your garlic. You don't need it for cooking. Uh, and then we're just gonna mix it all in together. All right, now that that's all messy and mixed up together, last thing we got to do is add our anise. And since we poured out all that corn juice, now instead of that, the corn will be absorbing this and give that bait a nice disappetizing smell for these fish. All right, that's the recipe we're gonna be using. You can add a bunch of other stuff like krill and whatnot, but this is the simplest, easiest way I've found to just quickly catch kokanee and trout on corn. And if it's good enough for the fish, then it's good enough for me. You know, I was expecting to do like a spit take and then cut to the normal video. That's actually not, actually not that bad. All right, thank you, Past Donnie. We're gonna slap on some of that corn you made and hopefully catch some more fish. All right, I think we got another on the homemade. That or it's just very snagged up. I think that's the case. Oh, no, we got one. Awesome. Woo, little jump. Oh, it came off. Oh, wow. Worth it, honestly. He was a tiny guy. Now a huge part of kokanee fishing is location. You can be trolling the middle of the lake and spend your whole day wasting your gas and not get a single bite. So where we're fishing, it's all about current. As I said, kokanee eat plankton and they are pushed in by the current. So if there's wind, you're gonna wanna go to the shore that the wind is pushing into. It's gonna be blowing all that debris towards the kokanee. Or if you're fishing a reservoir like we are, find the river mouth, see where the current is moving from that river and pushing. Uh, we're in sort of an eddy type area around the dam. It's gonna be pushing these fish to towards the shore and we're focusing on these drop-offs. So the land is sort of slanting down and then it'll dip and these kokanee are sitting very deep, uh, probably in 40 feet of water, but hugging the bottom and they're coming up and hitting our lures. So that's a general pattern. That's what we found today, but it can depend totally on the season. It's summer right now and these fish are a lot more aggressive, a lot more willing to swim further to get to our lures. So if it's winter, you may have to change things around, but that's what's working for us today. So as that one fish came off, this other rod got one. Woo! Look at that jump. Oh man. Oh geez, watch out for the motor, buddy. Man, these salmon, they're not necessarily super strong because they're so small, but the way they fight, there's nothing like it. So a really important part of targeting kokanee is using your sonar. Now these fish do have a very specific look to them on the sonar, which is nice because a lot of them all sort of look like just 
arches. But kokanee, they actually have an air bladder. So when that sonar signal is being sent down, it's sort of hitting that air a lot. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but all I know is that that air bladder shows and these fish look especially fat on the sonar, almost football shaped. So instead of normal arches, you'll see very plump fish with a bright signal in the middle. And chances are those are gonna be kokanee and they are a schooling fish. So if you see a fish kind of on its own, probably not a kokanee, but if you see a big school, that's what you wanna target. Those are gonna be those salmon. All right, this one feels bigger. Another one on the homemade lure. Let's see. Good. Still on there. All right, make sure this guy doesn't jump. Ooh, going under the boat. Woo! Wow, these guys fight like crazy. Oh my god. All right, enough messing around. Oh, came off right as he got in the net. Look at that. Gorgeous little piece of chrome. That was a pretty fun fight. All right, so this is really important. This is probably the number one thing people get wrong when kokanee fishing. You can be in the right place, right time, right gear and everything, but you can be going too fast and not get a single bite. You really have to go slow. You can be going, feel like it's a good speed for trolling and just still be way too fast. And so what I like to be around is about one and a half miles an hour. It's gonna seem like you're barely moving, but that is the prime, just average good speed for kokanee. Now, if it's colder out, you're gonna to wanna to even go slower than that. And if it's really hot, you may even wanna go faster. So you have to sort of test the waters, see what's working. And if your boat can't go that slow, say you don't have a trolling motor, you don't have that good of an engine, you can even just tie a few buckets off to the side of the boat. It'll catch water and slow you down. But the key is that you have to stay slow for these fish. Well, that was an incredible day of fishing. I have literally lost count of every salmon we've caught and we didn't film half of them because they were just coming like crazy. So amazing day and I hope you all took a lot away from it and can target these kokanee on your own. So I'm happy to be your virtual guide today. And if you guys do want to see how I make these homemade lures, which catch as much as the store bought ones, uh, be sure to let me know and I'll be sure to save you some money and show you guys how I make it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what other kinds of species you want to see me catch and I will do my very best to bring them to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.